Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome again this Sunday evening to our series Visite. Medical advice from a holistic point of view. And maybe I can start right away with the question for this evening. It's an email from a patient who is called Edith who wrote to me that she has an elevated laboratory value. She googled something and this laboratory value worried her very much. It's the lipid peroxide. The lipid peroxide has a normal value up to 180 micromoles and her value is 395. And she googled this value and analysed that it was quite high. It worried her very much. And she stated that it may actually have less to do with the food because she eats a lot of salad and fruits. She avoids ready-made foods as much as possible. And I could do a little more with vegetables and have a bit too much wine sometimes. Thank you for the sincerity here in your email. In recent years, she has sporadically added dietary supplements again and again. However, somehow she still feels quite stressed in life and especially in the last year. It was a very emotional year through the passing of a loved one. And by arriving in early retirement and for many years suffering from sleep disorder. And what you feel now is a feeling of aging too fast and too intense. above normal. So I think we people over 60 sometimes feel a little that life has a different rhythm for us. But to feel that one is really no longer as resilient on a physical as well as psychological level and that one is losing strength causes worries, especially since memory disorders also slowly set in. After reading, she can't really repeat it right away, or rather, she sometimes doesn't even know what she read the night before, and so on. Well, those are things that should be taken seriously, and that's why she wrote to me. With a good oxidised LDL, and that's actually the value which, when examining a lipid metabolism, is actually an atherosclerosis factor. The oxidised LDL must be below 230. It's at 59. That's wonderful. So please, it is not the cholesterol that causes atherosclerosis, but the oxidised LDL because it causes inflammation in the blood vessels. You have a good ferritin, a good storage iron. I also love the homocysteine. Homocysteine is a parameter for atherosclerosis. And homocysteine, if the value is okay, then I know B12, B6 and folic acid are in good balance. So the atherosclerosis risk is low. The whole glutathione metabolism is very balanced. It is in a so-called good homeostasis. The oxidized glutathione can be recycled back into the reduced one. So there's actually a pretty good intracellular detoxification there and yet the lipid peroxides are high. What's behind it? Selenium as an important trace element is good, sufficient zinc. Measured intracellularly, very important, 60 to 120, very good with 106. The C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory factor, namely this highly sensitive CRP, 
measured in milligrams, we measure that under one, wonderful, 0 0.8. That means silent inflammation is also fine. Vitamin D with 116 nanomoles per litre. I have to tell you, at 75 to 170, I'd like to see that stronger. What we're doing today, we actually have to adjust vitamin D much more quickly and intensively. You could freshen up a bit with 3000 units and vitamin K or now during summer give enough importance to it and of course get plenty of vitamin D too. So all in all I see laboratory values here that I could really present in future anonymously as part of this series so that you can also read such laboratory parameters. And the more you understand such a parameter, the more it is, without question, very valuable. But now you still have the feeling that something is wrong and you can't leave it that way because these elevated lipid peroxides are a sign that will only develop and lead to an oxidation of the fatty acids when mitochondrial protection systems are no longer adequately available. And our mitochondria, which of, have often been the subject here, are our energy power plants. And actually the entire balance of the body is not about anything else. It's about the production of energy because without energy there is no power. No power for the cell. No power for the organs, no power to get enough strength to make digestive enzymes, hormones. No power to stimulate the peristalsis of the intestine. So everything needs energy and that is what decides the health or tendency into disease of a cell. And of course, one cannot assume that these lipid peroxides are a problem for the liver and neither for the kidneys. Now it's about these mitochondrial protection systems. And mitochondrial protection systems are actually what we need if we use the oxygen which is brought to the cells by the red blood cells. And a loss puts the cell in dire straits. But the oxygen itself, that is the price we pay in quotes, that we humans and that we mammals live on earth and not in water. That means we have to utilise this oxygen. And this utilisation of the oxygen at the cellular level leads to the formation of highly reactive so-called ROS. These are reactive ox oxygen species that are immediately on the lookout to bind other electrons again. And that in turn is important that these ROS are reduced again by a so-called high power of protection systems. And for this we need, for example, the superoxide dismutase. That is a zinc and copper dependent enzyme to convert these oxygen species back into hydrogen peroxide, which in turn has an antibacterial effect on the health of our cell. Mm. So from the oxygen, two to three percent of the oxygen that arrives, these oxygen radicals are then detoxified via this superoxide dismutase. And if you now have a high metabolic rate, then of course you also have a high need for this superoxide dismutases. And there is now a great need for this entire respiratory chain in the mitochondria to keep them free of these reactive oxygen species. And now there is a very great burden on the organism at this point, which it has to compensate somehow. That means you have written that in the context of your life situation, you have come into a very large and stressful situation for a long time. What happens when you are under stress? 
Stress is always associated with a certain amount of tension. So if there is tension, then there is also tension in the capillary area. This means that at that moment, muscles are no longer is relaxed. Vessels are no longer relaxed. The blood pressure builds up. And at that moment, of course, it activates a system that unconsciously adjust to this stress. At that moment, the cell can get into a certain lack of oxygen. That's the way it is. So straight away, it has to continue to induce protective mechanisms in order to start control mechanisms that must now be implemented to produce energy anyway, so that it is ready or available. That means the cell changes to a different metabolic pathway and no longer produces carbon dioxide and water from enough sugar and oxygen. Instead, it produces lactate, lactic acid. And with that, the whole citrate cycle, that is, the energy cycle in the mitochondria is significantly inhibited. And on the other hand, of course, as part of this survival strategy, I minimize an unbelievable, complicated, biochemical, metabolic process to a very small minimum. Just so that you notice how the body tries to adapt to your situation. And of course, on the other hand, as part of this energy metabolism, it has to burn fatty acids, which of course, also provoke these lipid peroxides as an end product. This means that the high lipid peroxides actually give the indirect indication that a mitochondrial emergency has quietly set in. And that also makes you a little rancid. So rancid ultimately means that if now the blood lipids or when this lipid metabolism actually gets a certain dominance, then it also has an impact on the physical well-being, such as if the energy output shifts down, then I can't sleep either. Then my liver can't do this big detoxification job at that moment in the night. Those are things that you have already felt for years. That means the moment I can't sleep, I'll get into permanent stress cascade. There is inflammation, which slowly spreads because the body can no longer, which slowly spreads because the body can no longer keep itself in balance as part of its counter-regulation. Here too, it would be important to see how my adrenal gland is working, how much DHEA I produce. I take it from your age that you're also in your early 60s. So at that moment, of course, DHEA is the pre-hormone of oestrogen and testosterone. There is also a slow deficit and yet DHEA becomes released insanely during stress and can slowly regulate itself to a minimum. That in this exhaustion, the body slowly manoeuvres itself into hormonally. I think these are all things that are incredibly important to understand. And that, of course, above all, at the moment when you realise that you have put a certain extra strain on your body for a long time, that you don't think about what I have to take now, but just sit down now, maybe reflect on the time again and come to peace. Because alone in peace, it can reorientate itself and sometimes what you get through the daily diet and perhaps with a little more awareness in the context of the diet 
is enough, and as part of a conscious change in diet now, you bring the body back into equilibrium. And this change in diet is, of course, so incredibly valuable because the mitochondrial situation at the cellular level can basically regulate itself again energetically with what you ingest. That means the supply of antioxidants and high quality micronutrients. Via dietary supplements is out of the question, you can build a bridge with that. But of course it will be much more important if you now have a diet that is of high quality, that really should be gluten free to reduce inflammation at the intestinal level, which also slowly brings the intestines back into a strong microbial balance. For that, you should make sure that you get enough right spinning lactic acid bacteria in the form of effective microorganisms, for example, which is actually the most beautiful, the broadest and the most valuable base. On the other hand, also think of apple cider vinegar, think of sauerkraut juice, also think of microorganisms like Symbiolact, but maybe you also try, it depends. You have not commented on how the di digestion is going, but maybe start with enemas and coffee enemas and with salt enemas and garlic enemas once a month after a full moon. Perhaps try Rizols, which contain black walnut with Mimosa pudica, three capsules, three times a day, to look at parasites or Artemisia, mother tinctures, to take the intestines with you in all this. That you first have a strong and healthy route in this direction. It goes without saying that you should be doing your liver good. And that in the context of this derailment at the mitochondrial level and a dysregulation in metabolism, you should really no longer expect such a heavy burden. That evening glass of wine is not necessary. This can be reserved for certain celebrations, but it weakens you more than it is now helping to manoeuvre you out of this situation. You cannot cosmetically cushion laboratory values in any form, but you have to learn to understand them. And that includes that the intestines can be now fed with a diet that is high in vital substance, substances. It is not just about eating salad. It's also maybe too good to eat egg yolks, three or four egg yolks every day for the phospholipids, which are components of the cell membrane, that the cells can communicate well again. These phospholipids can help ensure that the detoxification intracellularly is regulated better again. And if you're taking organic eggs, take three egg yolks a day, maybe stir them in a little, maybe even create a small vegetable broth or maybe a consomme and stir in the three eggs. But please use mainly the egg yolk. Then you give the system really good support. It can also be four. That doesn't matter at all. And it has nothing to do with high cholesterol then, but it is good for the liver. Just as it's good for the liver to take milk thistle, preferably as a mother tincture from Ceres, which I love. These are herbal mother tinctures, which only protect the liver cells themselves with three to four droplets, but at the same time also support it in its detoxification performance. Three or four times a day before eating, three to four drops, completely adequate. Detoxifying the liver also means doing a compress in the evening, also with yarrow toppings either yarrow brew or as a plant towel. 
but sleep with a liver compress like this. If the nights are not too warm, feel free to sleep with it. Also drink enough good quality water, preferably still and in a good quality. It may very well be hexagonal water, however, with a high proportion of liveliness and vitality, a still water. And I think that's important first. The second thing is, make sure to get enough movement. Without movement, the engine won't start properly again. Mitochondria, energy performance, metabolism, thyroid, Hormone boosting all depend on exercise. We don't have to talk so much about things. You are in this happy state, let me say, to be an early retiree. So the subject of time no longer plays a role at all, which many always have as an excuse. And if you help your body and buy a trampoline now and do 20 minutes of trampoline every morning, all you need for that is good music and then maybe you can do a weekend course for fascia yoga or if you need people once or twice a week go to a training session where you have people around you who take you by the hand but also practice for yourself on the other days then this is a bit more than just walking the dog it's a challenge and above all, challenge yourself as far as it will go. And you can swear at me and say, what did she recommend to me? But just do it. You don't believe how you activate the TH3 pool, so the immune cells that give you a deep feeling of satisfaction, happiness, wearing yourself out. And you have remained so strong on so many levels as these laboratory values show, but to help this body again in this stressful pressure and to bring it back and sometimes push yourself to the limit, I think that's the most important thing now and always with the desire to enjoy doing it and to be important to yourself. I think it's very important to get the stress out and stress is allowed, pain is allowed, grief can also be lived but at some point you can devote yourself to life again and see the beauty in life again, full of gratitude for what was and full of appreciation also to your body, which has accompanied you on this journey through life to this day. And removing stress also means mentally feeling happy again, seeing the meaning of life, doing a photography course or whatnot, suddenly getting enthusiastic about nature photography. Life also wants to be redesigned in this phase. And sometimes we don't succeed at this age at a greater depth of life because we have it anyway, because today we are at an age where it's later than we think, but where we may also have this depth to life to help us once more to get involved so much for ourselves that we turn this body around again, that we take it with us, that we shape it differently, that we can also do it with beautiful things that you can see through your eyes anew and take with you. The most important thing is that your sleep problems get better, Edith. And take the 2L sleep reg from microimmunotherapy, which not only has an approach like 5-HTP to be regarded as the precursor of serotonin and thus also as a preliminary stage for melatonin, but that simply takes into account the fact which, you can, which can really arise, namely an inflammability as part of insomnia. And this 2L sleep preg sometimes has finally calmed down really unbelievable processes so that the body finds its way back into a good rhythm. 
These are, of course, modulators, immunological modulators. But the great value of this therapy is also to think of inflammation on a level that actually is, un is usually not that common, plus a combination maybe with curcumin, plus a combination maybe with curcumin, curcumin in the liposomal form three times a day, three to a maximum of five, six, seven drops, can slowly reduce the inflammation from your body here. Then, of course, the whole question of reducing exogenously toxic things. And here, too, a test is really needed now. How high are my toxic loads? And we are talking about things that I don't even know, but which have really become a problem for me in the stress of my life. Because with that, I always lose compensation because my body actually adjusts to the stress of life. And this, of course, can no longer replenish its central resources on the other side. Can no longer maintain its hormone balance. And there may already have been a burden that existed before, which now caused an imbalance in the so-called homeostasis. That said, I would recommend that you have a look at that and maybe have yourself tested for this and say, what should I know? What might cause mitochondrial damage as well? And I think of, for example, black hair color, which is very lead contaminated. I think of the whole question of cosmetics, which is aluminum contaminated. I think of medication. Over 270 drugs contain aluminum. It really is a serious problem today. And this small value, which in its size really should force us for many things, almost like a criminalistic procedure to take it as an opportunity to build a better, let's say, foundation again on which health can be built for the next few years. That's what matters now. We have to give our children good stability. We have to maintain this stability as adults because we have to be able to build on it in older age. And that's a good foundation, but it can get a lot better. And in that sense, I wish you, of course, antioxidant power you can also bridge the gap with micronutrients, but otherwise I think there were enough thoughts to take yourself into your own hands and to watch very quietly how a change will be created here. And this last values, I think were from May. And I think you should take two or three months for all of this in order to then also know How will this value behave in three months? I think you would be amazed at what can and will happen there. And with this in mind, I wish you all a wonderful Sunday evening. And I'm already looking forward to your questions and to the next Sunday evening. Goodbye. <laughs>